And Attorney General Jeff Sessions, uh, he says zero tolerance. Uh, he had an announcement that's his zero tolerance announcement this spring that the government will prosecute all unlawful immigrants as criminals, set up a situation in which children are removed when their parents are taken into federal custody, a policy he reinforced himself last week. If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. It's that simple. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law. Yes, we are pursuing a zero tolerance prosecution policy at the border. Having children does not give you immunity from arrest and prosecution. Bringing children with you doesn't guarantee you won't get prosecuted. Cannot. Our policies that can result in short-term separation of, of families is not unusual or unjustified. But the Secretary of Homeland Security claims no policy, no such policy exists, tweeting, quote, we do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period. And yet here's counselor to the president saying exactly the opposite on Meet the Press. Nobody likes seeing babies ripped from their mother's arms, from their mother's wombs, frankly. But we have to make sure that DHS's laws are understood. If I commit a crime and I am put in jail, my four children are separated from their mother because we don't have a policy or why would you want the children in jail with their parents? I will tell you that nobody likes this policy. You saw the president on camera that he wants this to end, but everybody has, Congress he has to act. He can end it Congress on his own. Can As a president, trigger? do you agree with uh, children being taken away from No, I hate it. Border? I hate Press the children Press being Press taken Press away. Press the Democrats have to change their law. That's their law. Sir, that's you your do law. That's the president's your policy. Why are you talking about, sir? That's the Democrats' law. I think it's been well established that there's no law currently that requires President Trump to do this. I mean, that has been shown to be patently false. I mean, that is a lie. This is a deliberate policy change, which is why you see a sudden spike over the last six weeks in the number of kids who are separated from their parents. President Trump could stop this policy with a phone call. If you don't like families being separated, you can tell DHS, stop doing it. Okay, a couple of things. You have the president uh, actually at, at least confirming the policy exists. Uh, you have Kellyanne confirming the policy exists. That's, I mean, usually she's a little bit more alternative. Um, I'm not sure why the Secretary of Homeland Security, John Kelly's pick, uh, said we, have, we do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period. I'd, I'd have no idea maybe why she would she, say something completely untrue. Could she maybe, testify in front of Congress? And well, maybe because she violently that. disagrees with the policy and is getting ready to resign. That could be it. Uh, not sure what's going on there, but then you have others blatantly lying. And this is where we're at. Um, at the same time, there are children being separated from their mothers at the border, and we don't even have the exact numbers on that. We're talking about the United States of America. So people, you need to wake up and see what is happening and speak out if this feels wrong to you. Um, but we're looking at Republicans who uh, I guess have a game to play here, uh, perhaps votes to lose. In a tweet on Saturday, the president seemed to acknowledge the policy is a negotiating tool. So he acknowledges that it exists and he's saying it's a negotiating tool, posting, quote, Democrats can fix their forced family breakup at the border by working with Republicans on new legislation. The truth is there is no law, and uh, this does not belong to the Democrats. No law requires families necessarily be separated at the border. As we noted, the current policy resulted from a decision made in April by Attorney General Sessions to prosecute all migrants who cross the border, including those with young children. You saw him saying it himself. Those migrants have avoided detention during previous presidential administrations. A 1997 court settlement bars children from being imprisoned with parents, and so Justice Department officials now say they have no choice but to isolate the children, which ultimately, Elise,
has them being separated from their parents and held in some way. We have a lot of people using a lot of different terminology, and I think it's all fair. But in order not to lose at this game in um, the in the category of rhetoric and in the category of uh, overshooting the runway out of anger, I think we can say they're being held and they're being held against their will and that this does not belong to the Democrats and that this is a Trump policy that is blatantly cruel. Well, you know, I was in San Antonio on Friday speaking with educators and Texas school board members who told me that they're really concerned about this and people who are on the front lines of this decision and are being forced to make these decisions. So now since Secretary Nielsen says that this is not the policy, does that mean Border Patrol agents don't have to do this? They don't have to enforce this policy anymore? And I'm just grateful that Mrs. Laura Bush spoke out and is using her voice and is being a brave Republican and speaking out against this moral abomination. Well, I, I also appreciate Mike Barnacle, um, Melania Trump, who did everything she could uh, to make a statement that was clear that she would like an America that has a heart, unlike, I guess, the others around her. I'm glad Melania Trump at least spoke out. I'm not sure where others in the White House are. I'm not sure exactly where Nikki Haley is on this, and I'm not sure where Ivanka Trump is on this. I bring it up only because she's very focused on women and very focused on parenting. I Nika, isn't she the White House's lead person for women and children, ostensibly? Well, I thought. That's definitely what she told me. I posted on her Instagram account about a conversation we had right after her father won. Uh, she invited me to Trump Tower to speak with her, and she wanted so very desperately to set up a platform for women and um, actually wanted to work with Dina Powell, who's an incredible, uh, incredible force um, on many of these issues. And uh, I don't know where she is right now. I wonder how she does this. Uh, I wonder how anybody well, can now allow she, now this, she can actually, Mike. Well, setting up a platform for orphans. Yeah, well. Because that's what they've, they've effectively orphaned thousands of children taken I, from their parents. I'm heartbroken by what's happening. And Why? I wonder what this means about the fabric of our country. Well, it, it's, that's exactly what it it's is. Falling I mean, it's falling apart. Just, it's, it's just another unraveling of uh, what America has stood for. Uh, for over 200 years, and I, I don't know how anyone in the Republican Party, no matter which wing of the Republican Party you're on, and I'm not asking you to explain all of it or all of them, but how can they sit there so silently while this is going on? It's astonishing. So the only two re prominent Republicans have come out are both women, both uh, first ladies, one former first lady. This is a colossal political miscalculation. I, I don't mean to be crass about it, but let's, let's just break it down. They sold this as a policy, right? They went out there, Jeff Sessions went out there, Stephen Miller went out there, and they said this is going to be a deterrent. This is going to keep people from coming from the, to, to the border. That has backfired. And the good news is, every once in a while, a story comes along that's so big that even the president and the White House, and this president's particularly good at look over here, look over here, look over here, that just sticks uh, with the imagination or captures the American public in a way that it won't let go. This president will not be able to escape this story. So now what they're doing is trying to defect, deflect and blame, and so they're trying to blame the Democrats, which is not true. I look forward to the president uh, saying at some point this has never been our policy. Uh, you know, you can hear him already saying this. Um, and this will, this will be a catastrophic, uh, colossal mistake for the Republican Party, who will not stand up for this. These are... These are um, families who are being literally torn apart at the border, and, and now they're trying to sell it as law, right? Because at first they promoted it as, as a policy, and this is the policy we're promoting, and then all of a sudden they say, no, 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 it's not our fault, this is the law. It is not the law. No. It is a policy, and the policy can be changed by administration, and, or the Congress can change the policy by virtue of law. And they have not done either. So you're, you're talking about the important details of this. I want to uh, look at the le legislative angles and the people behind that in Washington with Heidi um, and, and Nick. But first, I want to pull out to 30,000 feet. David Ignatius, when you have a policy like this, that then you have a president and his people around it 
not telling the truth about it, and I think that's putting it kindly, uh, blaming it on others, also arguing its existence, arguing its form, policy versus law. Uh, from abroad, in terms of our strategic alliances, in terms of our immigration policy, in terms of our national security, what's the impact? What should we be worried about? Mika, people will see this as one more example of the United States being unable to solve a, a fundamental problem. It's true, we do have a problem with immigration. We've been struggling for more than a decade to get bipartisan legislation that will deal with it. John Boehner, former House Speaker, made this his priority, and it, it absolutely fell apart on him. He was mm -hmm. unable to, to bring the wings of his party together. The country is as divided, and I, I must say the Republicans are as divided as they've ever been on this. The administration, Donald Trump wanted to look tough on immigration to appeal to their base, and you know what? They, they succeeded. They, they look tough. They look tough in a way that people can't live with. Uh, and that's what these quotes are, are, are telling us. But as I pull my camera back, what I see is this fundamental inability mm -hmm. to solve problems. It's not as if the immigration problem isn't real. It is. It does need a solution. It's just that our system isn't taking us to a point where we get legislation, get compromise, and, and get past this. Yeah. Uh, instead, we're stuck on the politics and this hideous cruelty of separating uh, children from their parents. Uh, Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.